What's going on, everybody? How are you guys doing? What's up, Donna? Hello? Donata? How you doing? Welcome in, guys. Welcome in, everybody, to another Pixelogic stream. My name is Ian. Some of you know me as Iris Sculpts, and I make toys for a living, and I get to make it here, which is awesome. And if you're new to this stream, don't forget to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. But feel free to ask questions, too, because... Uh, everybody here on the Pixelogic channel is here to help teach our process, what we know about ZBrush, and kind of spread that knowledge and how we utilize the tool on a day-to-day -day basis. So feel free to ask all that stuff. How are you guys doing? Do me a favor real quick. OBS says that I'm kind of lagging, but I have still good upload speed. So let me know if it's uh, coming through okay or if it's a little choppy. Uh, YouTube is a little bit behind sometimes, about 10 to 20 seconds. So uh, if you are noticing just a bit of a lag let me know worst case scenario is we try to reboot but it's sunday and spectrum 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 for me so, so sometimes they they do good sometimes they don't so but it says relax so okay how are you guys doing get my handy dandy pen and glove so today so for the past couple weeks actually let me back up the past few weeks, we've been sculpting Ken Masters from Street Fighter. Just a little fun, friendly project. Um, and we're going to start refining the anatomy. Last week, we focused a little bit on hair. And I wanted to point you guys to a really cool um, hair brush so that would make hair a little bit easier for you. So, yeah. Uh, what's up, Eric? Black Brook, uh, back, blah, blah, blah. Black Book Dan, how you doing? Looks good. No lag on my end. Sweet. Hello, hello. All right, cool. No lag. Let's let's hope Spectrum doesn't fail me now. So, um, anyway, like we were saying, was um, we did hair last week. We're still in the middle of kind of refining it. Uh, I take my time with hair. I'm very slow with hair, but it's because I really want to make sure it's going the way I want it to go. But there are a few brushes I wanted to point you to that I generally fall to when I do hair a little bit more like this. So let me pull up that resource for you real fast. I believe I actually bookmarked it. Let me scroll on down. Let's see here. Yes. Okay. Totally bookmarked it. So this will be for you guys. It's a completely free brush. Some of you might know it. It's called the Mag Hair Clump and Mag Hair Detail. Let me kind of go over the process I did so you guys know how to utilize this brush to the fullest extent. But just come on over to this website right here. And this is a really good brush to use, especially for long flowing hair, much like what we got going on in Ken's hair. So let me pull that up real fast while we go through it. Let's actually come here. I'm going to insert a sphere. Let's go through. Uh, wrong string title. Oh, is it really? <laughs> All right, let me let me plop on over and see if we can fix that. Thanks for the catch. Uh, let's see. It happens sometimes. Let me see if I can change it across the board. The fence here. Let me see. One, one second. Bear with me, guys. Yeah, it says my connection is fair, too. Hmm. Okay. Uh, it's not giving me an option. Why not? What's up, Snickles? How you doing? Okay. Interesting. Um, well, let's kind of go with it. Let me go full screen for one second. Tactical difficulties. How is everybody's Sunday going? Hopefully it's going pretty well. Oh, I see. 
Since there's not many resources in your country, I watch your broadcast and learn. You speak English very well. Oh, well, thank you so much. Feel free to ask any questions. Sorry, I'm actually just trying to, like, just figure out how to switch my stream. Yeah, if I can't see it in two seconds, we're just going to go with it. And I'll have them switch it afterwards. Sometimes that happens. Yeah, let's just go with it. I'll have somebody switch it later. They changed the layout here. And I have no idea where that's at. So I'm going to have to... Usually it was just a one-stop shop. Come on, just where's, like, where's the edit button? <laughs> Eight minutes in and he can't figure it out. What? Yeah, okay. You know what? Let's just, let's just move, let's move past that. Wrong stream title. It is. What's up, B? How you doing? All right. Well, let's go over the hairbrush real quick and we'll just correct the stream stuff. Good catch, by the way. Thanks, Eric. So um, let me post it one more time just in case. A little double posty here for anybody. Oops, that's the wrong one. <laughs> let me post the right link here. Okay. So that hairbrush right there is called the Mag Hairbrush. And it should look something where if you go load up your file, you'll have two you'll have two things. You will have hairbrushes. So you'll have a clump and a detail. And so how I did Ken's hair was I grabbed the clump brush, and it gives you two different clumps. So we're going to turn the wireframe on just so you can see it. But you get clump like this. That's clump one. And then, or that's clump two, actually, and this is clump one. So there are two different clumps. And what I really like about this is that they actually come with polygroups. But notice how there's no caps on both sides. They are... They are both capless. That's because if the brush actually had caps on this, like if we were to build this exact brush, the caps on it would actually allow us, uh, would not allow us to actually use um, frame by uh, polygroups, which is what we want to do. So you would draw out your strands like this. And then what you would do with this is you would actually load up your detail brush which is something like this, and you would come on up to stroke, you kind of come on up to curve functions and say, we're going to go ahead and frame mesh polygroups just like this. We do that, and it's going to have all of these polygroups now set up with a, with a curve stroke. We'll go ahead and grab like, oh, we want thin one. We're going to tap, boom. Now we have all of these strands coming through, which then will allow us... What this will allow us to do is actually turn around and edit some of this stuff a bit later. So we'll make that disappear. We can go to polygroups, auto groups, and then we can grab the move topological brush. And then we could start actually pulling out individual strands one at a time as, a, as we would like to get a little bit more flow and body. So... After we did the initial block out, which I showed you guys last week how to do hair kind of more sculpty, where you're just kind of laying down the mesh and then you're sculpting it in and then speaking up the details. And we did use the curve brush much like this. I just ended up blending it together and then having that shape. I then went back over it and then added those different types of strands, which will give me something a little bit more like this. So we're going to continue that here on this tail side of the brush. And then I'm actually going to start detailing some of the clothing. We're going to get the body worked up because it's still rough. I want to get the anatomy built in. So lots to do today. But just wanted to showcase that. So if you don't have that brush, take that link, send it on over. And it's free. So just go ahead and grab it. It's really fun. So shout out to that brush. All right. Let's go ahead and get the hair done fixed. And then we'll move from there. In fact, what we will do, you can see here, I actually have a clump of hair that is not the mag brush itself, but it's actually just basically a reduced sphere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tap this off so you can see. Let's actually grab the select lasso. We're going to delete these caps. This is how you would do it if you just had this part here. We're going to delete those caps. 
Then we're going to take the Z Modeler brush. We're going to hover, hover over an edge loop. And we're going to click Poly Group. And this, we're just going to pick every other one. We get something like that. Let's grab the Move Brush. Select this here. I'm going to scale this down a little bit so it comes a little bit more to a point. Perfect. Now let's grab the Mag Brush. Uh, let's do the detailed one. And I'm going to pick... I think I'm going to pick Thick 2 for this. We'll, we'll see. See what we get. Frame Mesh. A bit of a decent size. Boop. Yeah, I think actually that one's going to look pretty cool all by itself. There we go. Going to kind of push this in, make it look like it's tucked in a bit. We're just going to repeat this process. Actually end up bringing this to a point. Something like that. Yeah, that'll be pretty. Now let's actually take the mag. Not the mag. Let's take the move. Not parts. What do I want? I think it's move elastic. Give me a little bit of body language. Move this up like that just a bit. Now what we'll do is we'll do some auto groups right here. Poly groups, auto groups. And let's go ahead and like this got squeezed out for some reason. Put this in there. There we go. Worry about capping that off in a little bit. Hey, what's up, Lewis? What's up, Chris? How you guys doing? LT101, what's happening, dude? Welcome in, guys. We're just finishing up some hair stuff. Is it possible to re to Z remesh just a small portion of something? And if so, does it remove the UVs? So, no, it's not really possible to just remesh a small section of something. Um, and it does remove the UVs, yes. Um so you'll want to be careful when you choose the zero mesh because it basically is rebuilding the mesh entirely. And so that's why it doesn't really work with just a small section. So if you if you choose to zero mesh, the idea behind zero mesher is that you want to get the mesh as low as possible to then subdivide up. But once that mesh is set, you don't want to keep zero meshing it. The only time you'd really want to zero mesh is if you are trying to merge something together that you z uh, that you um, merge by uh, uh, union or dynamesh together, and then you want to rebuild that geometry. So ideally, once you zero mesh, you should be theoretically done with rebuilding the mesh, and then you're just kind of adding that detail on top of it. So no, it's not really possible to do that. You would want to kind of that's kind of like the last step before you start detailing. Great question, by the way, Naked Buffalo. Nothing you're chilling? Nice, man. Nice, nice, nice. Chilling is good. It's Sunday. Woke up extremely tired today. And that's kind of where my... That's kind of where I've been most of the day. <laughs> Get to come hang out with you guys, which is awesome. Okay. There we go. We're going to take this bit right here. We're going to we're going to add just a little bit of like definition. Thank you awesome answer. Answer my other question about merging. All right, perfect. 
glad I can help. So let me show you on this piece real quick here. Um, remember how we were tr how these this part has caps? So I deleted the caps on the other side, and then I said that mag brush you can't use caps um, to do this. So if I were to come up here and do our stroke frame mesh, notice how like it's I'm clicking it, but nothing is happening. So you want to make sure that if you build your hair like this, oop. Just go ahead and delete those caps if you want to do this frame mesh trick. Ooh. I was wondering if you had to zero mesh after merge. Um, no, you don't have to. It, it really depends on what it is you're trying to do. Um, I know plenty of artists that have only used Dynamesh. They never zero mesh. They never any of that and especially when you merge something together um when we're like let me show you something here real quick i'm gonna go ahead real fast and let's just delete hidden kind of kind of show you what i'm talking about i'm gonna build this right here boop boop again if you're trying to get something that i would classify as maybe watertight i would then maybe recommend you know trying to once you've merged it together and you want to rebuild the mesh, maybe then do a Z remesh. But just because you merge something together doesn't mean you have to then Z remesh it. Um, it depends on what it is your goal is, but also depends too on whether or not you're permanently welding something together or if you're just merging it together because you want those things grouped. Um, so for example, if I wanted these hair clumps, like this hair clump and this hair clump merged together, once I merge it, I don't have to Z-remesh, right? Um, the only time you'd want to, f if you're keeping things separate, sorry, my brain's kind of all over the place. If you're keeping things separate and you merge things together, um, maybe try to keep uh, similar subdivisions together or uh, like light items. Like if you have a Dynamesh part together and you merge it down with a Dynamesh part, that will keep kind of things organized a bit. Um, but if you have like subdivision level three and you merge into subdivision level five, you're going to lose subdivisions that way. So it really depends on the end goal of what you're trying to achieve. Um, ideally, I only merge things together myself if I know I want them permanently welded together. It's rare you'll see me merge something together and not weld it permanently because I tend to keep those parts in separate um that does result in a lot of different subtools, <laughs> but it's kind of how I work. So really you get to make the choice on that. So hopefully that's helpful. I know it's like a lot, but yeah, the answer is no, you don't have to only if you, if you want to. I'm going to delete hidden on that. So let's go back to our detail brush here. going to pick like thick three or thick two let's go to stroke frame this boom see this one strand over here that's like hey buddy we flipped over here let me see something why are we doing that what I'm going to do is let's do so geometry, Z remesher. I want to smooth groups off, keep groups. I want to keep, yeah, keep groups. I want to try this one more time. I want to see something. Aha, aha. There we go. That's better. Okay. So what was happening? Yeah, it helped a lot. Probably have to study more on welding. Absolutely. I'll, I'll, I can give you some examples of welding, too, here in a minute. Um, so earlier this week, I noticed a conversation came up in the Discord that I'm a part of, um, or that I created, actually, I should say. If you guys would like to join a fun little Discord where a bunch of us artists get together and conversate and troubleshoot stuff together, click that link, scroll down the bottom. It's just... Yeah, <laughs> we do a lot of we do a lot of talking about 
ZBrush and stuff in the Discord. Um, the reason I bring that up is earlier a conversation actually came up where when I was doing this trick, if you were to go to Stroke Frame Mesh and then you were to click, notice how all of them are going thick to thin except for this guy right here. This one, this one piece decided to go thin to thick in the same way. And that was kind of driving me nuts. Um, so, if that ever happens, mind you, we did come from having caps right now. So, what I thought would happen, and it did, was once I have my poly group set up, all you're going to do is go to Z Remesher, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero, and then you could say same poly groups, and go ahead and Z Remesh that which will then give you something a little bit more like this. Now if we go to Stroke Frame Mesh and tap, it's now properly all of them are going thick to thin. So that's that's good. So hopefully that's... If anybody's had that problem, that seems to be a pretty decent solution. I know, uh, Chris, if you're here, you had that problem at one point. Hey, what's up, Christopher? How you doing? Man, welcome in. All right. Okay. I'm going to set this in the middle. Reset that. I'm going to scale this sucker down. Bump like that. Perfect. Is it possible to sculpt the level of detail you got? Or higher in ZBrush Core Mini. Uh, ZBrush Mini Core. I sculpt in clay, but I want to try and print my figures on 3D. Oh, um, uh, Black Book Dan. Actually, um, ZBrush Core. So ZBrush Core Mini is is locked at like I think it's 750,000 polys. But here's a really cool trick you should try to do which is um, when you're trying to add more detail into your sculpt, do yourself a favor and take the smooth brush or the standard brush and set the intensity down to zero and then just move your brush over the space that you would want to, um, that you would want to put detail on. Go ahead and do your decimation uh, trick where you, you click like, I think it's low or medium, and that will take it down to a very low res. But then with the intensity, what you could do is you can then brush over a spot that you want to detail, add in a bunch of detail that you would like, then um, go ahead and do your decimation again. So And it will help you build sections of your mesh that's... that's um, and it'll, uh, Wow. It'll help you build sections of your mesh without overdoing the topology callout. Um, I would demonstrate it for you, but I actually don't have it installed. Um, I'd have to download it and install it, although I'd be willing to do that. Um, I don't know how it would affect the stream, though. But that's one way to do it. When I played with it, that's that's what we would do. So you can get a, a good level of detail in it. But yeah, it's um, in fact, that's the trick I did with a, with one of my... I did this like monster mushroom thing. So yeah, so again, all you're going to do is you're going to basically rebuild, redecimate. Then you're going to take the smooth brush or standard brush, set the intensity to zero. And wherever you want to add detail, go ahead and just kind of smooth that section. It won't ruin anything. And then add your detail, then decimate down. You're going to have to do it in sections, though, because again, you are capped. But then once you're happy with it, go ahead and export it out and you should be good to go. Yeah, rewatch it. <laughs> um... Let's see. Hello, how are you doing, man? Hey, how are you doing? The Marco Cuyo. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I can't complain, man. I can't complain. <coughs> okay. You know what I'm going to do with this piece? I'm going to throw this piece out. This one little piece. Let me fill this up right here. Color. Go right here. I'm going to delete this piece. Okay. Because what I'm going to end up doing... I'm going to scale this part down because I want a couple of these going around like such. I'm going to go ahead and control shift D, which duplicates. And then I'll set this over here and I'll kind of just 
move this around until I'm happy with it. Maybe elongate it. Ooh. Let's go! Thank you! Awesome. Cool, man. Cool. Yeah. Zebra Score Mini is really a lot of fun. In fact, if anybody here is wondering what it is, it's uh, Z it's Pixel Logic's um, free sculpting tool. There's a lot you could do with it. It's very powerful, even though on the surface it looks very limiting. So, highly, highly recommended. Hitting all sorts of buttons today. There we go. And yeah. Well, here are clumps. There we go. One piece in the middle actually seems very big. So we're actually going to scale that down a bit. Now I'm going to take the inflate brush. And I'm going to lightly kind of inflate that just a bit. Yes, like that. Cool. All right. Yeah. I'm looking at the silhouette right now because sometimes you get caught up. And by you, I mean me. We get caught up in the details. So I want to make sure that the silhouette is looking pretty good. So... I have this uh, outline thin or outline. I'm pretty sure they're default ZBrush materials, so you should have them. But I'm just kind of looking at how that hair is reading. Because now every little piece matters. And I have this rule where there's three clumps. I should be able to see those clumps in each side that you see the hair clearly. So one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. So that does work, and the 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 ribbons are not are not uh, interrupting that flow, which is perfect. So that is what I want, which means we'll save it and move on, and not noodle for days. How am I doing today? I'm doing pretty good, honestly. Yeah, just a bit tired. Um, I did a lot of things yesterday. Ran around, and yeah, and today I just woke up. And it just felt like, felt like, man, <laughs> I don't want to do anything today. You were expecting to see Sailor Moon? Oh, I yeah. Um, do you want to see the Sailor Moon uh, that I that I was talking about? Um, I, I popped into the Smartest stream. I actually woke up yesterday at a good time, and the Smartest was on here on Pixel Logics, um, and he was doing Sailor Moon. And I had done Sailor Moon as well a couple of years ago, and it reminded me of that. Let me load it up for you guys real quick. You guys can see it. Um, it's one of my older pieces for sure. So, let's see. I think I did it at the beginning of the pandemic. Like, oh my god, really? Let's see here. It will be down. Aha! Sailor Moon sculpts. Yes. Oh, that's the render. It won't be there. Is that the last one? Is that the last one? And this did print. Ah, yep. Here was my Sailor Moon I did a few years ago. And I did print this. This was my second or third attempt at anime. So definitely, definitely needed some work for sure. I look at it now and I'm like, oh man, actually I want to fix a bunch. <laughs> but you can even see right here. Yeah. And it did print actually. Let me show you the, the, the keyed version of it. The, here we go. Here is the keyed version of the sculpt. And what's funny is actually the hair did print and I had to use uh, resin epoxy, but that's how I keyed it. Put together so you couldn't even see the seams. Yeah. 
uh, this was this was a big risk. I really don't recommend doing this the way I did it <laughs> because because uh, it took forever to really get that set. Um, and this was really heavy since it was resin. So, you know, this was ambitious to say it worked. And I know who has it and it's still in one piece. So it did work, but there are better ways to approach that. <laughs> uh, let's see here. <coughs> Pardon me, I just choked on my own saliva. Uh, I'm thinking about getting a lifetime license cheaper than a GPU. <laughs> it really is cheaper than a GPU. Yeah, then you have it for life and you're good to go. Okay, let's go ahead and start detailing um, more of the muscle structure. So I have another website for you guys. Full of websites today. I came prepared this stream. I'm sure you guys have seen Zygote or Zygot's body. And if you guys had not seen that before, boom, go ahead down. It's free. You get male and female anatomy. We're going to go male anatomy. Say, yep, okay. You can zoom in with your mouse. Hold middle click. You can click it. And then right here on the side, you actually can scrub through all of the anatomy. And get the muscle structure and really we are looking for i'm looking to improve my bass the back muscle and make sure that every other thing what's really cool about it too is you could click on a muscle trapezius um you could butcher it like me lattice minimus <laughs> so rectus abdominis oh man i'm gonna get better with that but um it's pretty cool so you can actually come in here and isolate just certain functions um, even see how some veins are supposed to go, because we're going to be doing veins here in a minute. So definitely check that out. Is there a way to control the explode? There is, absolutely, yes. Um, so if you want to control the explode, first things first, the shortcut for that, if you're down here and you see expose, that button that's there. Okay, that's, that's the default. Um, all you have to do is hit Shift X, that will blow it up, and Shift X will bring it back. You would like to adjust that. You actually come do 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 right here under transform. You have X pose, and what you can do is adjust the X, Y, or Z coordinates. You can set it down. You can do a partial explode. So you can adjust this however you want. You can just explode on the Y if you would like. So you can just do this. So, yes, that's how you would control it. Oh, nice. Mike showed it off. Perfect. I use it all the time, too, and I realized I never shared it. So, awesome. We've come a long way. Postmaniacs, <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the website. Absolutely. That Jet Set Geometry, how you doing? All right. Okay, so, yeah, let's get into it. I have some... So what we're going to be doing is detailing, and I found some really cool reference that I actually want to get this level of detail on. So this is where we're going to be going. So I have my little... Let's actually... I like to do this where we're just going to go ahead and kind of post... Ooh, you know what? Real fast. See this little swoop here. I want to fix that. I want his head shape a bit more. You know, honestly, let's try something. Right, let's save it. And uh, I have this philosophy. If you're not sure how far to push something, do yourself a favor and break it. So we're going to send it over. I want to try something with a hair. I don't know if it's going to look good. But we won't know unless we try. So let's go ahead and just give it a good, good solid go. Let's hide all of that stuff. Look at space. Get out of here, Ken. Oop. Okay. So That's what I'm thinking. What you thinking, Lincoln? Uh, we're going to go ahead and kind of really soften this up here. Here, soften that up a bit more. All 
kind of want a little bit of a twist on it. I think that would be cool. I don't know how distracting that's going to be. That kind of covers this face. You don't really want to do that. Maybe we have it flowing over his shoulder a little bit more like that. Beauty part about long hair is that it really just has kind of a fun little mind of its own. I don't want a lot of clipping, so... Probably fix a couple strands. Over here. Yeah, I feel like... Honestly, I think, I think I'm feeling this a little bit more. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. <laughs> <laughs> All even more. Do I get nice? Yeah, that looks nice. Right, yeah, it looks nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and look at that. It looks like it's coming out the way it should be. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hit D. If you guys didn't know, you can turn on dynamic subdivision while you're in T-Pose Mesh. Okay, what we'll do is we'll actually end up fixing this strand over here. So we'll fix this. It kind of broke a bit. That's okay. We actually might be able to do something. Let's let's try to move forward with this. I think this would be kind of cool. Let me just kind of come in a bit more like such. Really soften that up. Come in here. Honestly, a lot of times it's just playing with it. Just seeing what happens. Kind of move, tuck that part back in. I could say it's definitely a lot more interesting from the top. The swoop, okay, his face isn't so covered anymore. You still bring that down a bit so we could see most of his face. Face, face. Only time you don't want to see his face is if obviously we're looking at his back. But we want interest there as well. Let's actually put this right about here. Stars. Do that. Maybe a little bit over this way? Yeah, you know what? Let's go with that. I think that looks pretty cool. We'll just critique it a bit more. We'll save up a different section, but I think this will bring a little bit more interest. Paulo, how you doing? What's up? Got here late today. Nay, we just started. I brought the NOS, so we're good. It's not a sponsor. I'm just... It's how I'm staying awake right now. There we go. Yeah, okay, cool. And this face isn't covered. Yeah, let's play with that. I think that looks pretty good. That hair. Nice. Keep that internal part in there because we want to make sure that when we do weld that together, it'll be nice. Grab that right there. 
tuck that back in. We want those strands. So we do have this broken strand right here. Let's go ahead and save this off. And we're going to call this 15. But we're going to note here underscore um, air pose change. This is how I leave myself notes. If I know where to go back. Go ahead and take that clump and move that hair clump around this way. There we go, tuck that back in. Probably add a little bit more hair coming around, but kind of fix that little bit that was busted. Ran, ran, ran. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I tried changing it, but for some reason I couldn't find the uh, the right spot. So we'll 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 change it after the stream. But how are you doing? Welcome in, welcome in. Yo, Ryan, what's up? Hello. All right. Okay. Yeah, I think that swooping over is a little bit more Ken Masters. Which is good. So, alright. Let's go ahead and save it officially. And now let's move on over to getting the body detailed a bit more. So, now, notice here how, like, it's just, his body's just posed. But this is still, like, block out. We haven't even started detailing. Um, this is where I like to pull in reference for sure. And what we're going to be doing is... Really focus here on the deltoid and the pec because he's hunched over, right? Um, a lot of this, he has a lot of muscle that's built on his frame. So right by the clavicle where there's a little bit of a dip, if you got enough chest muscle and enough uh, deltoid muscle, you can see here that that little kind of triangle dip. Let me actually bring up my pen. It tends to go away because he's rounding forward a little bit, and it's and he has a lot of uh, of big pec muscle. So there's this little connection spot right here that ends up connecting. So we have our clavicle right here, right? We have this little flat spot coming in this section right there, and then we have his deltoid coming in. And of course, it's a couple sections. Whoop. Don't mind the that part. Let's go right there. Okay. And then we have this little kind of peck overlap here that's happening, which is pretty cool. So we're going to go ahead and just when we do this, we're going to keep that in mind because you can see where the fibers are coming across and being apart. You could see all that happening. Right? So we want to make sure that we kind of follow that. So this little V section right here that I'm talking about right here, that can disappear depending on how much muscle you have on your upper uh, upper portion of your chest. So that's really, like, it's okay if we have a super deep uh, cavity right there. Oh, there's an update. Cool. Good to know. So that's what we're going to be focusing on right here. So you notice I have the call out of where that is. That call out was really for me, so I knew where the connection point is, but it's okay if it ends up disappearing because it looks wrong right now. So we're going to be fixing that. And so we're going to be using a the clay buildup with alpha 19. Intensity is going to be very, very low. I'm going to be turning on something like matte cap gray or maybe even basic material just so I can see a little bit better. And we're going to go ahead and start just kind of getting this level detail up. Now, notice when you start detailing anatomy, you want to keep in mind that you want a good size poly count or topology uh, subdivision level. So we're at under 500,000. So we're going to kick that up. Something maybe a little bit higher. Yeah, 1.4. That should be good. So we're going to start adding some detail in. But we're going to do it slow. I never... 
and never build up too much muscle too quickly. That might be too slow. That's intensity five. There we go. That's better. And I like to sculpt in the direction of how the muscle fibers are. That's where our zygote body, that's where this guy comes in because we can zoom in and we can see where the fibers are coming across. Really nice. I'd say, yeah, that's going to be pretty good. Hello, hello. Indie God, welcome in, welcome in. Uh, I do speak English uh, only, but I tried my best to like do some sort of Google Translate. I know it's not perfect, but I try to make sure I get as many questions as possible. So we're going to detect language here. Hello, hello. Welcome in, welcome in. All right. So let's go ahead and just kind of hide that for now. And we're going to start getting this in here. And again, we're just focusing on the fibers and how they're connected in. Same with the chest here. And while I'm building muscle form, sometimes, rarely, but sometimes, you'll actually see me do something like this where I'll smooth this kind of down. And I'll come back over that. Just kind of help get that, that correct shape. And I'd say at this point, definitely take your time with detailing. No need to rush it. And have your reference on the side so that way you know you're getting what you want. I used to draw muscle so much when I was younger. It's like muscle memory now. <laughs> but I'm... <ch> <laughs> But the fine details are another story. Yep. Nice. I try to keep... Um, luckily, this pose for me is very much a, uh, a... It's in symmetry. So... Um, you get a little lucky. Um, but there is some asymmetrical parts of him, so we'll make sure. The other thing, too, is try not to smooth when you're doing any type of detailing like this. It's okay to, like, you know, get your focal shift a little rough and maybe carve in a little bit of details, but try not to smooth so much so much when you're detailing because um, it tends to ruin everything a little bit. But if you have a low if you have like a low uh, intensity, then you find that you can actually go back over and blend shapes together a little bit more. I'm also going to take the damn, the damn standard as way too high. A bit of a brush. I like to kind of come where I know that the muscles have a little bit of a connection spot. I'll kind of emphasize that area. Right here, there's a little bit of a pinch. And remember, taking away is just as important as adding. If you see a spot that's like, ooh, that's way too, that's way too big. Go ahead and add a little bit of it. All right, what are we going to do here real quick? I'm going to grab the select lasso. I'm going to see if I can find an edge loop. i got a lot of spirals here. I want to see if we can separate this a little bit, polygroups. That's... Yeah, there's a little bit of asymmetry here. That's okay. Interesting choice there. Yeah, that's...
go auto groups. There we go. Delete that guy. Delete that guy. There we go. Okay. Just got to find the right one. This way we can hide certain spots. Because you can hide and keep subdivisions up. And now we can work on his abdomen and not worry about his arms being in the way. Atheon Studios, hello! Save and hydrate! Oh man, what would I do without you? I'm gonna ignore that, by the way. Go ahead and save it. I take my energy drink and my water drink. Come on. All right. So what we're gonna do here, abs. Abs are never, ever symmetrical that's i'm just gonna throw that out there <laughs> abs look so cool especially when they're not symmetrical that doesn't mean you can't do symmetrical time to time that's that is that is something you can do however if you can avoid it do so so the outer part of of his abs we are going to do symmetrical you know uh, but the inside, right here, we're going to break that up a bit. So I'm actually going to smooth this down a little bit here. Okay. A little destructive. But we're going to rebuild this so it looks a lot better. We'll start symmetrical and then we'll work our way up. Now, the thing that I like to focus on is we really want to make sure that we focus on the rib cage, right? So, back this up for a second. Gonna take a couple stamps here. So, we want to make sure that we focus on where that rib cage is at. Okay? And key part to remember when you're focusing on the rib cage, the rib cage helps shape the body. Okay. This is a poor rib cage, but you'll get the sense. All right. So the ribs do affect how the upper parts of the torso ends up looking. We want to keep that shape in mind. So we're going to be kind of bringing this up a little bit. Let's take our play build up. And let's get this part here where that ribs be. Okay. Now he's kind of bending in a little bit. He is a little hunched. Nope, that's the expose button. Come here. No. Ooh, computer's just so fast. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, so limo. So we're gonna kind of bring this up a little bit. Take the move brush. Kind of bring this forward just a little bit. I mean, it's tucked in just a bit. Doing a nice slow build up, nothing too crazy. the only part you'll see it be symmetrical we're gonna end up breaking this apart real soon Don't worry about that part so much abs right <laughs> abstain from symmetry that's funny i like that abstain from symmetry that's funny i like it in for a second take the damn standard and we're going to invite some nice lines Okay. 
Nope. Want that lat separation. Don't rush this process. Take your time. You take them as shredded as you want. We'll probably give him a very unhealthy 5% body fat. Okay. Now for, let's get the abs part in before we start giving it more than we need to. I'm gonna take the damn standard, right? So. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of give ourselves a little bit of app separation right here. I'll actually make this one a little bit lower. Turn symmetry back on just to give us a weird definition spot. There go. Belly button. Not gonna worry about thinking. Go. Take that clay build up. E C B. Bringing some of that in. Now we're working asymmetrically. Look. All right. Go, go, go. All right, let's go right here. So we have this line right here. Here. I'm gonna just zigzag the spot just a little bit. Oh. Turns it back in. Do a little bit at a time. I'm not going to stay focused on one spot because I feel like that's just very, it ends up being very destructive. So now we're just going to go to the arms for a second. Start bringing in some of this arm detail. Now he is flexing, so we're going to be a little bit generous with how his muscles end up showing. Statue has to be interesting enough, right? in some good tricep lines here. Again, kind of following those fibers a bit. Oop. Come here and let's take a look. Wow, oh, that just like zoomed way out. Come on. Come on. Where are we at? Oh my gosh. Why are you freaking out on me? Try that again. Okay, cool. There we go. We want these fibers coming down. Coming around here and down. That's what we want.
that damn standard. Let's put in a little here. Kind of show that nice separation. Yeah, just working it. Just work it. Posture shaking me one check. My personal posture? Yeah, probably. Um, I try to keep my back straight as much as possible. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Come in here. Again, we're not going to have too much in the way of... Muscle separation on the, tr on the tricep. It's flex, but it is going to be relatively rounded here. So I want to make sure that that's... Gonna be looking right. Back this up for a second and let's just see how it looks. Let's go on the back now. Let's get the back looking a bit better than what we got here. Do I recommend a Cintiq tablet like a tablet with a screen or a regular tablet? You know, um, it really depends on what's... My opinion is it, it it really depends on you, the artist. For me personally, I am six foot four. I got a wingspan of, you know... <laughs> uh, I, I just dropped the bird. Anyway, I just got a massive wingspan. So for me, the Cintiq works perfectly because it's small in my hands. But at the same time, too, honestly, like... Um, when I had a tablet without a screen versus tablet with a screen, I feel like with the screen, it really helped me stay more engaged when I streamed. And it allowed me to just kind of to kind of get more into my sculpts. And it felt like I was drawing. Um, so it, it really is you. I, it doesn't really make the artist better. It just can make some things easier over time. But again, it's, re it's really preference. Um, I know some amazing artists who hate this NT. For me, it works because I'm able to just kind of get in there. Um, I have it on a swivel, so I can position it however I want. So um, I just wanted it, so I bought it. But no, I don't really recommend it um, unless you're really serious about your art and you really are like, I want to see if it works. And then I would say try it before you buy it if you can. If you know somebody with a Cintiq or maybe at work, they're like, hey, we're going to be getting Cintiqs. You know, see if you can like try it just because... It's, it's hit or miss for some, and it's an expensive thing to just jump on if you're not sure, so. Start subject. <laughs> I just have the screen recently done. Some old non-screen tablet, and it's killing my creativity. Time to get a new one. Yeah, that's... So again, I think it's, I think it's preference. Ultimate. Okay, we're going to give him a little bit bigger, uh, or not bigger, but wider wingspan, since we are talking about wingspans here. Oop, actually, I'm more push that in. That's so right there on your. Uh, what, the, what tablet are you currently rocking right now? Right. Get that lower back in there. So even though we're not seeing a good chunk of this, I want to get it at least looking somewhat right. So we're going to be bringing this in. 
into us. Nice, nice. They've been for a new camera body first. Too many expensive hobbies. Oh man, do I feel you. I did wedding photography for about five, six years. Uh, so yeah. That does get pretty pricey. Okay, let's go back here. I'm just going to pull up this anatomy reference off screen for a second, just so I can get the right shape that I'm looking for. And then, ouch. Carve that in a bit. You're going to cut negatively here for a second. So bringing that back. Screen was an XP Innovator 16. Nice. It, <laughs> what's up, Darren? Yeah, yeah. Pixel likes the mix you up with this Daniel person. I know, right? Hey, hey, it's all right. Oh, we get it fixed. <laughs> oh. That might be a little much right there. Style that back a bit. You're going to a wedding this weekend with my current cameras. Uh, got the Tamron 70 to 20, uh, the 210 millimeter for it. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, I have two little questions. Uh, how did you learn anatomy and how did you practice it uh, in your sculptures? Do you just take a reference and try to reproduce it over and over to end up with perfect with it looking perfect? How it looks? Uh, that's a great question. And these uh, Shin um, actually. So I learned anatomy in a few different ways. Um, when I was a part of a 3D character workshop with Shane Olson, he went over anatomy um a little bit in the beginning um where he kind of shows you the breakdown of how to block it out and then what i did was i ended up taking spicer's course which you guys should definitely check them out um to increase my anatomy now before those two courses i had done a little bit of anatomy stu study beforehand when i used to take martial arts so i had an idea of how it was but with those two courses uh, and then applying how it was um, over time, I just started getting better and better. There is a lot of practice involved with it, and there is a lot of showcasing. Um, not showcasing, that's the wrong word. There is a lot of, like, trying to block it out as effectively as possible. Um, and then you're always, you always should be looking at reference anyway. So it's never, anatomy is so complex. It should never be like, oh, I took it for six months and now I'm perfect with it. it memorizing anatomy and how it should look takes a very long time. A great book I recommend if you're starting is Anatomy for Sculptors, um, especially if, you, if you're if you not able to take a mentorship with anywhere or you're not quite sure. Anatomy for Sculptors is a pretty, I mean, it's a really great book and it always helps out and it's very affordable. So um, you can go that way. Um, I did share a anatomy reference uh, earlier today, which I'll share it again right now. But then, yeah, a lot of it is also too just researching how bodybuilders look, how skinny people look, how thick people look, how people with a lot of fat look. It's really important to like kind of see how that is. And even though we're not medical doctors or aspiring to be, you're going to start noticing like, oh, you're going to study how fat actually builds on the body, where it builds on the body. Um, you're going to look up nervous systems if you're interested in like how the the body moves, you're going to end up seeing how it should react with itself. So you end up just really diving deep into it. I've been studying anatomy on and off for the past four years, and I'm not stopping anytime soon. So it really is like constant research. But with a couple of really good books and courses, you can really get far fast. And then the rest is just practice. And getting them gains. Yeah, I also uh, am <laughs> looking ripped. Dude. Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Rithion Studios. 
Um, actually, two real quick. Uh, let me pull it up real fast. Um, if you guys are a part of my discount, uh, discount my, my if you're part of my Discord and you would like to take um, the anatomy course I'm talking about with Spicer, you definitely should do so. I can get uh, I do have a 25 dis, uh, percent discount code on it. So I big shout out to him. He's also a Pixelogic streamer. If you don't know Spicer. Definitely go check him out. Um, I'm not sure when he streams. I think his schedule, he's been on and off for a little bit. I know, yeah. I don't, so I'll have to find out when he streams. But um, this is a really great course if you're if you're really serious about it. So definitely check that out. And that's in my Discord as well. So follow it in. Take it. Uh, no, not a problem. You're absolutely wrong. Uh, Proko's channel on YouTube has like an anime course as well. Very good. Perfect. Yeah. There's so many references. There's so many resources. Like, if you just go to Google and be like, learn anatomy for sculpting, <laughs> you're just going to hit gold. So you'll be good. Um, what do you think is the hardest muscle or body part to, to sculpt? Ooh, that's a great question. Honestly, the face. I think the face is probably the hardest thing to sculpt. The torso, the butt, the the... You know, even the, the groin, the legs, the arms, like, you know, once you get a good understanding of these muscles, if they're pretty simple to remember, um, it's just, you know, getting the right, uh, of course, it's getting the right um, the proportion and volume. But the face, the face has so much going on that you really like to find appeal can be hard sometimes. Um, and, I, and then hands is a, is a close second for me. Personally. I want to soft relax this part right here for two seconds. Getting a little bit of clipping air. Kind of inflate that back in. I'll rebuild that. There's a little bit of weird pinching happening right there. And because the statue is... It's going to be welded together eventually. I don't mind that kind of pinching right there. Um, is it possible to rig a character like this for animation? Not in its current state, no. Um, because it is it is Z-Remesh, but it is not optimized well. But um, if I were to do any type of uh, character for animation, I wouldn't be posing him and sculpting him. I'd be sculpting him in A pose or T pose, and then I would be turning around and uh, getting him prepped for animation. So in this current state right now, no, it's not possible. But, you know, if I wanted to... I could reposition him in T-Pose and then move move that way. So um, it's not impossible. It's just I didn't set myself up for, quote, success. Especially, see, you can see some, like, this will all be welded together because it's interacting with, its, with each other. But, um, yeah, it's kind of broken in there. But that's going to get welded, and so we're not going to see that ultimately. So no big deal. When I sculpt for statues, I sculpt in asymmetry. But when I sculpt for um, when I sculpt for any type of animation, I do T pose. But I do mostly toy statue work, so that's why you'll see me do a lot of um, a lot of pose sculptures. Okay, let's actually drop the intensity, not the zero. That's not going to do anything for you. Let's go one. Definitely the face. Uncanny value by the hotspot. Yeah. Yep. Especially likeness. If you're trying to do a good, like, more realistic likeness. Um, yeah. It's, for me, it's more time consuming now than difficult. But it just, it takes so much time to sculpt a good face. I would rather slow down and just do my best attempt and not rush it. But everybody's different. So, yeah. Go back. Let me look at the back muscles real quick. Okay. That's that's actually right where I'm... S yeah, that makes sense. Actually go up a little bit. So he's rounded a bit, so those muscles are should be a little bit softer. They're not as... His lower back isn't... Super 
diced at the moment. That's that's got the section. Let me rebuild that section right there. Actually, get this here just a little bit more separated, too close together. So, we're just gonna go ahead and kind of figure that out. Oh. Body is so freaking cool. There's just so much going on with it, you know? Bring a little bit of softness back to that. He's more rounded. He's more flexing forward, not backward. So you can't flex your back and your front at the same time. Try, though. Might hurt. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, for clothing, uh, you should combine the mesh of the clothes with the actual body, or should you keep it them separated, if that makes sense? Also, is that your way of making clothing in ZBrush? Um, so what I'm going to be doing is, uh, for the most part, I'm going to be cutting off his body. I'm going to be slicing him somewhere about here. Right about there. And then I'm going to be making a key for that. And I'll plug into... Um, it's actually going to end up plugging right into uh, um, his uniform. So that will get cut off. And then his clothing will actually, I'll end up capping that off. What I'll be doing is it's, it has subdivisions. So I'll end up creating an internal and then capping it off, which will make it easier for printing. We'll get to that when we start doing uh, keying and merging for the final. Right now, I keep my clothing uh, with single-sided geometry because it's easier to manipulate and it keeps the, the topology level down. So, um, and yes, I typically make my clothing in ZBrush. I don't generally make it anywhere else at the moment. Um, so I use a lot of the masking, extract, zebra mesh rebuild, and then I use dynamic cloth um, ultimately. That's too much. Ooh, lots of questions. I love the question, guys. Uh, let's see. What do you think is the best way or the way you use for creating clothes in Blender? I have no idea. I don't use Blender. Where does the oblique and serratus go? I'm having a hard time with those two placements on the torso. So you're gonna have to forgive me on my <laughs> my anatomy uh, lingo knowledge, but check this out. So I shared this link before. I'll share it one more time because we are doing anatomy detailing. But what you could do is pull up that website I just dropped right now. So when what you can do is you can click on the serratus. Muscles. Now, the serratus muscles generally follow the rib cage. We go to the bone section itself, get past all the organs, do, 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 and go to the bones. Serratus muscles usually follow the rib cage. So, if we were to go ahead and kind of tear that down just a little bit more, you could see the rib cage, and then there is the serratus. So, you can see how those connect up 
the rib cage. So it starts one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight. nine, nine. Yep. So that's that's where that goes, and then the oblique itself. Let's come back up a little bit. Doo, 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 doo. And then the oblique wraps underneath the serratus and around. And the oblique actually stretches from the backside underneath your lats. It actually wraps from underneath and around, and then it connects into the front. And this whole band just wraps around. And then that connects to your rectus abdominis coming straight down. So obliques are here. Serratus is right above that. Just above that. Oh, that link gets a shortcut in YouTube? Does it really? How about this one? Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I've been, I've been, so I've been in the industry for a little over two going on three years, but I've been sculpting for over six years. I did uh, some freelance in the beginning. Lots of freelance work. Okay, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Oh, perfect. It really helped you with hair. Maybe realize I stressed that, that too much. <laughs> yep, I totally understand. Uh, trust me, I get it. Sculpting hair is definitely like a... Oh. But the more you do it, the easier it gets. So do not fear. Oops. Uh, how do you know until when a model has enough detail? Know if it's finished because you can keep adding details indefinitely. That's a okay. That's a super great question because you're right. I can keep sculpting this thing for infinity and beyond. Um, however, the real trick is what do you what do you see your sculpt looking like, right? At the end of the day, what is it you're trying to achieve? And only you really know the question, the answer to that question. But what I say is, generally speaking, um, when you, there's this term called noodling, where you're just like, you're just kind of, kind of adding stuff. You're like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna add this detail here. Then you erase it. Then you come back and you tweak it like just a little bit more, and you're just like, okay. And then you come back and you tweak a little bit more and you're like, eh, okay. And you're not actually progressing in your sculpt. That's when I think you should start considering the fact that you might be finished. Or you just hit a wall and you're not quite finished, but you don't know how to proceed. So generally speaking, when I catch myself noodling too much and I'm not progressing in the in seeing the sculpt come, you know, come together as I want, I generally walk away. And then I come back like the next day or a little bit, like an hour or so. Um, I just give myself time to have my eyes refresh. And then I go back to my drawing board and say, okay, what am I trying to get again? Because maybe maybe I missed that. So you're constantly doing a checks and balance with yourself. It's really difficult to get in the mindset of, of being so close to your project and not seeing what you want and how to get out of that. It's not... It's not easy to do, but if you give yourself the time to walk away and come back, you'll you'll start recognizing that, and then that in itself will become easier over time. So when I'm when I'm detailing, especially with detailing, because everybody kind of wants the detail so fast, they want to get there as fast as possible. That's why you see me take so long in my blockouts because I don't mind it not being super detailed or being you know being so detailed that like I'm like oh it looks kind of done. I take the time to really block out because then i can really see when it's time to move into detail and it, it tells the bigger picture so um yeah sorry i might be rambling a bit but hopefully you get the sense of it it's really all about checking in with yourself and seeing does this work is this working the way i want and how do i keep moving forward and if you're not moving forward then it's time to maybe walk away put it down for a minute come back and see how you're doing um but yeah, it's just time and experience with that. Uh, 
Hit so many walls. Ugh, we all do. Trust me, we all do. Uh, so let's see. I uh, just ordered a walk, uh, walk him into his pro medium. Can't wait to get to all the winter wraps. Woohoo! I literally thought I should make the hair perfectly from the scratch, and that's definitely not it. No, no, <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's up, Kyrus? Yeah. Time for another drink. It really is. Thank you, sir. The other thing, too, I would say is, you know, find your favorite artist, whoever they may be, and, you know, kind of don't compare yourself to another artist because it's not fair. If you start sculpting today, that's when your journey starts, right? But if you compare yourself to me, for example, I am six years ahead of you. So that's not a fair comparison. But when you look at another artist and you see what they're producing, ask yourself, oh, is that what I'm trying to achieve? And then you can look at that artist as inspiration, not comparison. So it's definitely, it's, it's definitely finding inspiration so that you know how you guide yourself. Because nine times out of ten, your style, whatever that may be, it's going to come from reference, inspiration, and practice. How you practice, what inspires you, and what reference do you pull. So if you wanted to sculpt like Raphael Grissetti, for example, I highly encourage that you like study him as an artist, look at his sculpts, go through everything that he does, and say like, oh, okay, I want to get here. Then find out what inspires you to make those pieces. Combine that with his reference. And then, you know, you start developing your own stuff. But you'll start slowly getting closer and closer to his level of work over time. Because you're constantly trying to achieve that quality. So it's really all about, again, inspiration, reference, and practice. And that develops your style. So people who do likeness sculpts, they really love and they're inspired by realism, so they push for that. But your journey starts the day you start doing it, and you'll never catch up to somebody you're trying to chase after, so it's not fair to compare yourself to that person. But it is okay to look at it for inspiration and guidance. So big, big distinguish distinction between the two, and um, but it's important because then that'll help you achieve your goals. Uh, water, not nice energy, <laughs> two different glasses. So for me, for example, I really, really, I really like anime. I really like the realism that, or the hyper-realism that Daniel Bell, Garcetti, they, they find Mike Thompson. Like, I really like that. But then I also love, like, you know... The ability to just produce things that I I love. So I love fan art too. So I'm pulling from fan art. I'm looking at other artists, and then I'm trying to develop on that side. And then eventually, you just your style comes out, which is cool. Thank you. Thank you. I found this. I found a great shirt site. I'm gonna <laughs> get a pencil. What's just about nice, man? Nice, nice. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit of a the polish brush here, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of flat planes, and then go back over it with my clay buildup here. Actually, another great brush for building up is just the clay brush. Drop the intensity because it produces a little bit of like what looks like that natural kind of fat in the skin. So it's really cool to like kind of go over muscle definition with the just the clay brush. It produces a really neat Effect. And again, his back isn't going to be super diced, so we're not trying to make it super shredded because he's rounding his back, right? But we're still going to get some good muscle definition. Clay, the clay brush also helps kind of like give us a little bit of a smoother look. Okay, 
kind of brings that back in there a bit. I'm going to take the move brush real quick. I'm going to kind of push his pack in just a little bit. It's a little weird. Uh, my favorite piece of art trivia is where term masterpiece comes from. Ooh, student used to copy only his master's work over and over until it, he was ready to do his first piece that that way in his own style. His first piece was his masterpiece and made and made him a master if accepted by his mentor. Whoa, that's interesting. That's something. I love that. That's cool. Or you know. So now I'm just using the basic clay brush. That's all I'm doing. Going to help kind of Bring his muscles into the world. Yep, again that part gets that part gets cut off a little bit. I'm not too worried. Fine. Bit of subtract in there. There we go. Here we go. Let's see here. Uh, hey, Ian, that character is sick. I've uh, always been an inspiration. Can I ask how did you create the hair strands? Because last time I saw it, it was still Dynamesh. Thank you for more power. Always, oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, so we covered it a little bit beginning at the beginning of the stream, but I will gladly go over it again. But make sure to definitely uh, kind of uh, go back in the beginning uh, because there's a few links that I shared. Um, you can also probably Google them, but um, let's go right. Oh, that's the other move. We let me save it real fast, and then so last week, right? We covered basically dynameshed hair, which is how I recommend starting out your hair, even if you're choosing to do uh, strands. It's just a good way to get the hair looking the way you want. Now, once you have that in place, you can then replace that hair with. And let's actually come here to pose number 13, I think. 12, 13, 12. I'm going to go back a version. Okay, here we go. Okay. So there's a brush. Now yeah, let's just pull it up. Boop, 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 boop. So real quick, we're going to separate this guy right there. So you can see it. it is okay so there's a brush that you can download or you can build it yourself but it's called the mag hair clump and detail brush and i think i still have it up here for you i can just drop a link again there it is yep saved everything i came with links so that you know um and basically what this is is you can draw this brush out so you can take your hair mag clump and let's just go ahead and grab a sphere. So let's come here real quick. Let's go insert. Now this brush is easy to make. So if you want to know how to make it yourself, definitely can do it. But basically, here's your hair piece. So once you have your hair flowing the way you want and you've sculpted your Dynamesh hair, then what you do is you end up replacing that with this. So you end up having that flow and then you just kind of draw this clump out and you give like a decent sized clump, right? And then from here, all you're going to do, oh, grab that. Okay, cool. Is once you're satisfied with the shape of it, you're then going to get the other brush, which is the mag hair detail brush. And you're going to go up to stroke, curve functions, and then you're going to do frame mesh by polygroups. And that's going to give you all these curve lines at once. And you can go ahead and tap that right there, and that will give you your hair strands falling the way you would like it to be. 
And then what you could do is once it's once it's set there, you can go to poly groups and you can go to auto groups and then you can have different hair strands, which is really, really cool. And you have some different options up here. You can also do this, like let's say you build this section and you don't have that brush. There is a brush in ZBrush called Curve Alpha or Curve Alphas. And this is um, ZBrush's, basically ZBrush's hairbrush. Um, that actually has like repel function to it. So then same thing, go to stroke frame mesh, go ahead and tap on that. And then it produces the hair coming out looking like that. And actually, to be honest, the curve alpha that comes default in ZBrush actually really does a great job looking like hair. So that's how you would go ahead and do that. It's pretty simple. There we go. Let's see here. Ba, 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 ba. Hypothetically, <laughs> why polygon? What polygon range would you take this four million poly mesh to make into for a video game? Uh, it depends on the game that it's going into. If I was going to be making this for a video game, usually you'd be capped. Um, if it's a AAA title and it's a hero character, so. Um, you know, you would generally find out what your caps, generally speaking, by what render engine you'd be, you'd be putting it in and how the game itself is going to be built. But I would say if you're going to do it for a portfolio piece where you're showing the T-Pose and stuff, you know, don't don't go over 200,000 polys for the low version. I think that's a safe number, but you can practice by giving yourself like, a couple ranges you know you could practice giving yourself 10,000 polys for character 50,000 polys for character 100,000 polys for character 150 and 200 it just depends on the level of detail you're gonna do um i i don't work with a lot of video game companies so i would refer to somebody else who might but i would say don't don't go too crazy with it for the low poly the high poly can be as high as you want it you can have 14 million because eventually you're baking it to your low poly you're creating a uv mesh that is low res that then all those details get baked onto so the high poly doesn't really matter the low poly and whether it can handle it that's the other question so i would say start somewhere within that range and then kind of work your way up go back to the clay um thank you thank you Paris. yeah we're gonna just take our time with getting these muscles looking looking good couple connections here I want to change, but yeah. Bit of... Take our time. Let's see here. Um... Yeah, no problem, no problem. Let's see. <laughs> his, his cheeks are clenched. <laughs> his cheeks are so clenched. Yep. And we're going to be getting rid of that. So, yeah, you know, like actually what I'm going to do, what I should do real fast is going to create two spots. Let's actually come here real fast. That's sh that's sh that let's go right here. Oh, that's pretty low. Hello. So let's actually go right here. And then I don't really I don't know yet if I'm going to tear his pants so much but what we're gonna do we're gonna create some more auto groups ask that section off okay this way it'll be easier to delete this section because this section won't be needed i'm debating i'm holding on to these legs because i don't know if i'm gonna tear Probably gonna do it. I'm probably gonna tear his pants. And it'd be really cool if his pants were torn and looked good. So, oh yeah, so we'll see. Go ahead and save again. Let's focus on the Cer uh, Serratus and the Obliques here because they're not looking as pretty as I want it to be. And so let's let's get that let's get that focused. Okay. 
out. Let's focus there. Come back to the chat. Okay. Thank you. I've been doing <laughs> I've been doing my hair also. Thank you. Perfect, perfect. Looking sweet. Definitely taking notes on some stuff for tomorrow's grog session. Yes! Awesome B. I can't wait to see it. Is it worth doing anatomy for your character even if it's gonna be covered by clothing? Uh hey Kareem, how you doing? Panther, great question. Here's my answer. <laughs> and it might be controversial for some, but hear me out here. Yes. Yes, it is. Any chance you can practice putting anatomy in there, do it. But, and there is a big, like, but caveat here, okay? Because I say this knowing what, uh, how it works in the professional world. Right now, if you are learning and you're not, quote, a professional artist, anytime you can practice anatomy, do it, right? But as a professional, personally for me, I find it harder to bring in my anatomy study. So when I'm working on a character, even though I know the clothing is there, a lot of times what I'll do is I won't spend uh, all day on it, but I will definitely come on in and do some quick anatomy blockouts and refinement so that I keep practicing. So practice when you can. Schedules permit. I always end up making that a little bit interesting, right? But um, ultimately, if you're needing to get a project done, no, don't waste your time practicing anatomy when you're like, I really got to get this done. I'm on a crunch timeline. Hurry, run, run, run. Right. You don't want to you don't want to stress yourself out. So. It really is dependent on situation, but it, it doesn't hurt. I do it here to kind of showcase like, hey, practice when you can. But ultimately, when, you know, if it permits, great. If not, move on and just get your project done. So that's kind of what I mean by controversial because I'm like, yeah, I do it all the time. But, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but generally speaking, you know, if it's not going to be seen, there's no point in spending time on it. Right? Because you're not going to see it. So what? So why? So that, and that's and that's the that's the question, right? So I say take it by sculpt by sculpt basis. I have. I know I don't have back face mask on. Hm. Feeling like I did. Okay. I feel like here his. I feel like his chest is a little flat. I don't feel like he's really... Fix that. Give him some... Little bit of a peak on his higher abs. It's... I call the false abs. Right up here. Because not everybody has this part showcasing. Some people do, some people don't. Yep, it's always good practice. Thanks, the stream is so helpful. Definitely going to be tuning in more. Yay, perfect. Glad I can be helpful. Um, how do you put the jaw and teeth inside the mouth for games? You know, the mouth animation and things like that. Hey, Kareem. So I don't typically sculpt for games. Um, so I just want to preface that because... Yeah, I don't really sculpt for games. So I really want to preface that because I don't, I don't want to give bad information. Um... Uh, so actually, you know, who you should check out if you really want to get in depth of that, I would check out Shane Olson. He really does that stuff. Um, but what I would say in the time that I've done it, and I'll showcase you how I have done it before. You want to keep the mouth neutrally open and then, you know, if it's visible, it's going to be a part of that. You know, you'll probably end up grouping them together, but yeah, I would say, let me see if I can get you something. Let me see if I can send you to the right spot. You'll ultimately, yeah, be you have to hit the nail. You'll ultimately be creating a mouth bag. Let me show you a project I did it on, um, which was for animation, not for games. It might be different for games. 
I generally scope for toys, so I don't like speaking where I'm not 100% certain. If that makes sense. But I'll show you what I've done on a professional level. Um, I worked for Coach.com a little, shoot, about a year ago. About a year ago, and this is what got approved. They liked it, so, you know, usually restrictions are team-based, meaning that the studio that you're working for is going to determine or dictate what you do. Let me go... Where's this file? But yeah. That's post. I don't want to do that. Where are you at? Where are you at? Detailing fixed. Okay, here we go. Let me load this up for you real fast. Okay. Okay. So, this is a project I did a little while ago. Name is Rexy. Really cool project. And we did have her mouth, tongue, and stuff like that here. Um, be textured in um, Substance Painter. But, I what I did was I foldered everything here. So we're going to turn everything else off. going to put this in here. So, I had the jaw, teeth, and tongue as one piece. These were... These were all separate pieces. The teeth were separate, the tongue, and ultimately the jaw I had separate as well. And then inside the uh, inside the mouth, whoops, let's come here, come on, in the body. Let's go to the body real fast. Showcase you. I had generated what's called a mouth bag. Now this is the Dynamesh version, but you have the mouth bag that sits there. The mouth bag is important because it gives you, it gives you more realistic shadows inside the mouth. But this was basically the breakdown. I kept it separate. But yeah, um, as far as what they do in games, I, I would say uh, definitely want to like go check out Shane Olson. He streams tomorrow at like eleven. He would answer that question a little bit better. I just don't want to give you wrong information, so. Um, you can also, too, there's a few game artists in my Discord. Um, and so if you want to take that question into our Discord, there are a few uh, instructors, teachers over there that you can call out and ask, and they'll help you get on the right track. Yeah, I totally get it. Blitz would be the worst problem. Yeah, not a problem. Chef Window Dino. Yes. Love that dino. Okay. Continue to work. Going a bit. Do I recommend learning a bit of modeling, sculpting, rigging, animation, or just focus on one thing? Um, I recommend over time learning a little bit about it. But really, you know, by at the end of the day, you know, you really want to be good at what you're striving for. So if you're trying to be a character artist, you know, it's really helpful to understand how um, rigging and animation works. And it's okay to dabble with it. Mixamo is a great site for that. But you don't have to be an expert in it. You should really know how it works. So that way you're, you know, when you're giving your models over to somebody who will eventually animate, uh, rig it and animate it, they'll actually appreciate the fact that you understand it so that you can optimize your sculpts as much as possible. Um, you don't have to be an expert in it, but understanding it is going to give you so much more knowledge and so that it's just going to help you. But it's not like don't lose sleep if you're like, I just can't learn that right now. That's totally fine. I understand the basics of rigging and animation, but I always defer to a team. So I'll ask them questions. You know, I always check in with them. I work at Funko right now. And so we do digital pop where we have cards that are made that do get animated. And I learned their pipeline. So I understood. But if I'm not sure, I go to them. Hey, 
guys, how does this work? What do you want to do? Um, it's helpful. Um, but at the same time, I do have interest in learning more and more about it. So always improving, always gaining knowledge. That's that's important. But yeah, it's not necessary to be fully versed in it. Just have a good understanding so you know what you're producing so that when you create stuff for others, uh, other team members, it's going to help you out. In fact, actually, I have been doing more game-ready uh, stuff. Um, so I've been learning that and getting better at that myself. Because I like to keep my options open, you know. One day I may not work at Funko, and then I'll be like, hey, I want to go check the studio. Lots of opportunity out there. So the more you can learn and get better at it, it'll just help you in your career. Do I merge before I export? Mm, not typically. It depends. Uh, exporting for what? Are we exporting for... If we're exporting for uh, gaming and, and animation, I usually will merge stuff together that gets merged together and then FBX it and send out an FBX. Uh, but for, for uh, statue work, no, I only merge together what needs to be. And then I export... Um, each STL out one at a, uh, as its own tool. This weird little lump with its back. What did I do? Oh, that's why. Okay, I pushed that in there a bit. I'm going the wrong way with those fibers. Get the clay brush back. BCL. There we go. See, uh, I've been applying like crazy at Funko. It would be a dream to come true to sculpt for them. My favorite question on the application is what Funko Pop for you? Yeah. Um, well, they asked me that and... My favorite... I, I don't own this Funko Pop. I would love to, though. Um, is the... Uh, it's um, Vegeta with the red hair. It was on... I think it was... It was a... Um, I think it was a... Oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank. Comic-Con exclusive back in 2015? 2016? I don't know. I wasn't working for Funko at the time, but I saw it on eBay for like three grand. And that's the first time I said, I pay that. <laughs> I don't know what it's worth now, but yeah, uh, that was definitely, uh, that was one of my like, yes. Cause it's funny. Cause like Vegeta's character originally was going to be redheaded. Um, but then, but then to save on ink, they went ahead and started just, they just made it all black. They made all the Saiyans have black hair by default. Color was only introduced officially once they started doing Super Saiyans and stuff, but yeah. So. Slight little fun fact. <laughs> okay, let's go back here. Yeah. Funko is all of like we are we get to make fan art for a living. So it's cool. Yeah, Funko is a great company to work for. If you get the chance to, it's definitely a great place to work. Highly recommend it. Want to make sure with his chest that we really define those X. Taking the damn standard, I'm giving a little bit of that connected tissue, a little bit of puffiness. 
Some people's chest muscles are connected at the sternum, and some some are not. Fun, so you can definitely like play around with how pushed together the chest is. Find it having a little bit of a flat spot and make it look a little bit more shredded. Put that little spot back for just a second. Be applying some texture enough. Yeah, that's starting to starting to come together. Yeah, and I'm just more or less taking my time with that. I want to make sure that getting the results I want. I don't rush my detailing process. It takes as long as it takes. How detailed am I going to make the face? Uh, that's a great question. Um, let's actually, we're going to start getting to that in a minute. Um, I haven't settled on an expression yet. So what I have right now is just kind of a stoic face. But once I get the body where I want it, I'm gonna, then going to match the level of detail into the face. So yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun. Uh, let's see here. Um, is there a difference in sculpting depending on whether the print is going to be in filament or resin? No, not really. Um, I'd say the only difference is maybe uh, the way you want to ultimately, um, or the way you ultimately will be uh, cutting it up will matter. But for sculpting, no. No, I never prioritize what, pr I never like, I never think about what printer it's going to go on. Ultimately, when I key it, that's when I start Deciding if it's going to be on a filament printer, then I make certain decisions uh, to cut the sculpt. But during sculpting, no, you don't have to stress about where it's going to be printed. You know, a lot of people, in my opinion, underestimate filament printers. They take forever. Let's not <laughs> let's not play around. They take forever. Um, but at the same time, with with knowing how to optimize your supports, you can print anything. Um, Real quick, um, there is a free ecrache that uh, I got from Raphael Grissetti's website. Just tons of shout outs today. That's how we work. Um, this was printed 100% in filament. This is not resin. This is in several pieces. Um, the head is separate. The torso is separate. The arm connection, I don't know if you can see it, but actually it is separated and plugged straight in underneath. Um, and then, of course, you have uh, the torso. It's then at the legs, it's connected. Each leg is separate. And then the base itself is separate. This is 100%, without a doubt. I don't know if you can hear that. It is filament. It is not resin. So you can get high-level detailed prints in filament. It's just this literally took 48 hours and five sessions to print. So... Um, you can do it. It's just, you know, yeah, how long, how much time are you spending on it? Also, too, I mean, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend printing miniatures on a filament printer because there's a lot of hit and miss. Um, but if it's a pretty decent size, uh, a pretty decent size sculpt, um, yeah, you can get some really good details. So, so I wouldn't worry about that so much. Is YouTube enough to learn how to uh, learn to sculpt 3D characters? Um, that's debatable. I really think that's up to you. 
Um, ultimately, um, I would say connecting with other artists is going to take you or help take you to that next level. Um, if you are struggling, definitely seek out a mentorship uh, with somebody because they they can help you refine. How you learn on YouTube is really dependent on you, the individual. I went to YouTube University as well, and I learned a lot there. But at some point, I hit a level, I hit a wall, and I couldn't see it anymore. And that's when I joined a mentorship. And that took me to the next level. That helped me get refined and uh, a little bit more on top of it. So it really is up to you. Some people learn amazing with YouTube only, and they can do the whole pipeline. Some people can't. But I say it's a good place to start doing it. It's half the battle. And then after that, yeah, connecting in. Uh, Ian, I missed the hair part. Can you explain the technique that you use to make the hair look a little bit more realistic? Um, so I explained it twice, and at the very beginning of the stream, it's definitely there. Um, if you're here, we have an hour left. If we're here, if you're here by the end, I will go over it one more time for sure. Uh, but you are on YouTube, so you could scroll through the back or just wait until the stream's over. But I can also, at the end of the stream, go over it one more time. I'm going to buy an X-Files I Want to Believe t-shirt. Yes! Do it! Where did I put my pen? No, there it is. <laughs> okay, I'm going to save right now, because I don't know when I saved. Vegeta is hard to find. Sorry for the delay. Yeah, it really is, isn't it? Yeah, it's a really hard one. I'm going to save up money for, like, the next five years, and then I'm going to see it one day. And just have that money on standby. <laughs> then any and all of my friends are going to be like, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, let's refine this a little bit more. So when muscle detailing, something I like to do as well is, it's not just about applying all the right textures, but... Um, in the right spots. But a lot of times, too, it's considering how the, the body um, creates cavities and little divots. So, like here, I want to improve this detail right here. So I'm actually going to increase my my um, damn standard a little bit more. Okay. And I'm going to start having an indentation where those muscles would be kind of wrapping. And then I'm going to go back over it with uh, with my clay brush. And sometimes, too, just knowing that, like, oh, yes, this actually kind of creates a little spot right there. If you don't like it, back it up. But you, like, create a couple lines, and then you reinforce it with some detail. Now we're not gonna. Oh, we are gonna see his belly button. I like to symmetrically add little belly buttons, but there we go. There it is. We're gonna create a little groove in his belly button. Is that the right spot for it? Let me double check that. Uh, I think it's a little lower, actually. It is. The other good technique, too, when you're doing stuff is um, ask yourself, hey, is that right? A lot of times you'll do something and you're like, oh, yes, I think that looks right. And then you realize, eh, maybe not. So, like, for example, right here, I want to add one more little muscle separation right here and that belly button is actually a little bit lower now will it show it's not gonna show all right cool that's not gonna show that's on me so also i'm gonna do is i'm gonna raise up a little bit because it's looking a little weird to me. Bring this up. 
Check your volumes, check your proportions. And in doubt, look at it again. Don't ever be afraid to just correct yourself. Especially with anatomy. Hey, not a problem. Absolutely. Time for a drink. Yay. Am I planning on printing this, Ken? Absolutely. You guys know it. Actually, right now, um, right now, we are uh, in the Discord. Um, we are doing a Street Fighter kind of collaboration sculpt where we are, a lot of people are just choosing a, a different character. So I got Ken, for example. And... Um, we're putting together a book in the end of August of everybody who participated. So if you are interested in a project like that, and you're part of the Discord or would like to be a part of the Discord, go right ahead and join. And then uh, you can pick a character, Sculpts. But yeah, I'm going to print this. Well, take the clay and I get a little bit of a. Yep, that is a great, that is a great spicer trick. Absolutely. 45 degree angle from the waist. Bunny landmark meets in the middle. Yep, absolutely. I just wasn't sure if I was going to add a belly button or not. I don't think I want to. There's not one in the original concept I'm pulling from. <laughs> to belly button or not. I think belly button's on... Unless it's realistic. Sometimes I feel like it's just good not to add a belly button. Ah, uh, that's a great question. How many characters are left? Hmm. Let me... Let me see real quick. So if you actually... There's what's really cool. So if you pop over to the Discord, guys, and you come on down, we have a channel called Collaborative Artistry. And inside of it is where we issue the themes. And right now, let's see. We I think we still have a good amount of characters. Yeah, we do. So there's 78 characters in Street Fighter. We're going from Street Fighter 1 to Street Fighter 5. So... Pick your poison. But everything in red is what people have picked. And then everything in green are characters that still left. So if you'd like to participate, just join the Discord. Come on in. Pick a character. You have until August. And there's, you know, just have to meet certain criteria. What's cool about this is we're treating this kind of like if you were working in the industry and you have some criteria you're going to have to meet. But we're going to keep the themes fun. So this is one of, this is the first of many many different uh, ones they go through so so yeah so just come on in here you can see this was a little poster we pushed it on so really really cool so yeah pop on in check this out again it's over collaborative artistry and if you need a link let me know and we'll get you a link fifty five characters left nice Now, I'm not going to be streaming this character all the way until August. I will be wrapping this character up, hopefully, uh, in the next couple of weeks. I try to do most of it here just because I really like to uh, showcase most of the workflow here on Pixelogic. But at the end of the day, I also like to finish my work. So <laughs> I'll probably be ramping this character up a little bit harder soon. 
and then we get to keying. I promised you guys we would key and cut the next model on air only, so I won't be doing it off stream. I will be only doing it on stream. So be prepared because once we're done with this, we're going to cut it and key it here. Leave you me, that's going to be very, very fun. Very, very repetitive though, so you've been warned. Yeah, you know what? Back to that. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, not a problem. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that link down at the bottom. Seems like you can finish your sculpt a lot faster than if you were not talking in chat. How long does it sculpt? Usually, like this one take. Um, so if I was doing this at uh, four work solely under NDA, can't share it working eight hours a day, I, I would have been done with this character probably in about one to two weeks. Um, at least... You know, getting in a good 40, 40 to 60 hours into the sculpt, and then I'd be ready for my first major revision. Um, generally speaking, most of the time you're handed a concept and you just got to follow it. So, yeah, if I if I did five days a week, eight hours a day, I could have this done in about a week, week and a half. First revision, and then usually timeline, timeline for a given statue... Um, sometimes it's like three to four weeks, depending on the studio and priority of said of said project. So, but yeah, I, I like to <laughs> I like to showcase it here, and then I like to talk a lot. So, <laughs> you know, bring all the information. Boom. All right. Let's work on his face a little bit. Let me let me see if I can find a good Ken face. Let's see, what do I have here? I remember I kind of had mentioned at one point the funny part about Street Fighters particularly is like they made Ryu and Ken have very little definition in their face. Um, at a lot of their angles. So getting something to look really good. Yeah, I don't have any reference. Let's actually pull up a let's pull up a reference. See if we can find a good Ken face to refer to. And I'll just show you what I see. My my searches are usually safe. Ken Masters face. Alright. I will say, I'm not a big fan of Street Fighter V's Ken face. I feel like they didn't make him, but I like this. Ooh, that's good. Look at those furrowed brows. This is from the movie Street Fighter made. Ooh, look at this one. He's so angry. They always have him smiling, though. We don't want him smiling. We want him a little bit angry and focused. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take this reference. I'm going to slap this over to my pure ref. Get a big face in there. This is, this is how I get reference. I just slowly start going through it. I already have most of these. I think I, yeah, see, I have that one. I actually have that one. You'll see here, like we zoom all the way in. Look at this. Not a lot of detail. He's just stoic. He's just a stoic dude. He's very serious in the ring. Very serious. He's he's pretty, but stoic. That's how they made him. See, look at this. Street Fighter 2V. Very simple. Mm, here we go. A little bit of furrowed brow. Actually, this might work, too. Some reference. I am kind of 
making my own version of Ken. I'm not solely copying one to one. But, you know, want it recognizable. So I'm trying to at least be inspired by a good amount of what's happening. Oh, here we go. Oh, that's a. And where does it send me? <gasps> Perfect. Screen grabbed right where I wanted. This gift sent me this. That's perfect. That's what I. That's what I want. Yes. Yes. Save. I'm watching Thundercats. Ooh, Thundercats. Nice. Seems like yeah. Let's see. Okay. Um, approximately how long does it take you to finish them all like that? Yeah, about like I said, about forty, sixty hours uh, for professional collectible. Uh, yeah, probably. I think that's that's true. Yeah, so they didn't have to waste money on the sprites. I'm gonna pick a, street, a character from Street Fighter. Do it, Kairos. Let's see. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I think adding some uh, rips on the clothing would give the model more. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm headed that way too, yeah. I completely agree with you. Okay, the other thing we're gonna do here real fast is uh, now we have the anime version of a facial expression. Now I'm going to do male angry face expression. Now let's find a face that we can refer to enough. We're not going to be making it look like this face. We're just going to be looking at furrow brows. Oh, hello, Mr. Wolverine himself. Now, I'm not going to be making him scream, but there it is. Oh, that's the look. That's that's the look. Oop. That's the look. Yeah, perfect. Save! I will definitely save. <laughs> Show you, you know. Boop, boop. All right, cool. So let's let's go to his face now. Now let's look at some of this aggressiveness, nessness, and let's start sculpting that in. Very stern look, yeah. Uh, other style reminded me of uh, Kinshiro, um Fist of the North Star. Ooh. I don't know if I've seen Fist of the North Star. And models be reused when they are similar. Like, for example, to model Ryu using what you did from Ken. Absolutely. Yes. 100%. In fact, next time you play Street Fighter or a game that has a lot of the same kind of shredded characters, absolutely. You know, a lot of times, like, if I wanted to make Ryu and I had... I, I could just clip this body and repurpose it, add some stuff that you need, and then, yeah, tweak it in. So, absolutely, um, it's done all the time. A lot of times, for when projects get built from the beginning, um, there's usually a character artist or somebody who develops a base mesh that then the whole team works from. And they are always trying to optimize the the whole process. So, if you make one base mesh, you're like, here's the bulk of your middle-sized shredded characters use this base mesh and don't deviate too much from it it's going to help with you know uvs animation topology all that good stuff so yeah absolutely oh i definitely heard about street fighter 6 i'm excited i'm excited either way street fighter 5 launch was terrible i actually left street fighter 5 when it launched the first year in it and i hadn't played it until about three weeks ago <laughs> i started playing again because it's just fun um uh but I i'm excited and hopeful very hopeful for the uh the next one but i think they're not going to launch it until sometime in the next year or two so they just dropped season five of street fighter five which is their final one so they're going to give that some time nobody's competed in season five yet so i think tournaments are going to start showing up soon not that i'm doing that no way uh let's see 
Cheers from Argentina. Hey, what's up? I'm wondering how did you get the red ribbons made? Any tip they make so clean? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So actually, if you have the latest version of ZBrush, um, what I did is, and you're going to like this right here. So this is just a strip card, and then I added dynamic thickness to it. And so if you go to B and then C for curve, you have curve flat and curve snap. I just used curve flat and I drew that out. And then of course too, you can just grab your curve. You can kind of play around with it however you would like. And then all I did was I went to geometry, dynamic subdivision, and I applied a thickness. And the thickness is dependent on the scale of your model. And then once you're done with that, you just apply it. And now it's actual geometry. Um, I generally don't apply it right away. I usually wait until I'm more near the end of it. But that's how I got those ribbons flying. And then actually, I have to kind of finish building this knot in his hair. Um, I'm leaving that a little bit more towards the end just because I'm lazy and I don't want to do it yet. But yeah, that's that's how I did it. You're welcome. So welcome. Thomas Middleditch. Wow, ouch. <laughs> I'll take it. I got <laughs> you guys are funny. Alright. Uh, let's go back. Where was I? The face now? Let's go to the face. <laughs> no, you're welcome. Absolutely. Uh, asset libraries are good, send at work. Absolutely, yes. Look, the more you can save yourself trouble, if you make a combat boot from scratch, right? And you're like, boom, combat boot. In fact, Darren, if you're here, you did a bane recently with a boot, save that boot. Just save it. You're going to change it for the future, but at the same time, it's like, if you're working a project, you're like, oh my god, I had a combat boot on this model. I do it all the time. Oh my god, I had a, I had a hand pose I really liked, and I used it in this model. I'm going to go rip it. If you sculpted it, it's yours. Use it as many times as you want. Absolutely. It's only going to make things a lot easier for you. So yeah, it's not cheating if you've done it already. Actually, I don't even believe in cheating. Like, honestly, just, yeah. You've done it. You can do it. Good job. <laughs> Save it. Save it! Alright. Get a little bit of uh, some... A little bit of angry pose going on here. Bane's fingers will be used several times, I'm sure. Absolutely. A <laughs> great artist feels, yeah. <laughs> like I said, I've done it before. I, I've done it on stream here before, too. A few times. Like, man, you know what? I did this one thing this one time. I'm going to do it again. Let me just take it. I am a huge fan of doing it yourself the first time and then saving that asset. That middle ground be between being super lazy and hardworking. My laziness prevails a lot. <laughs> Smart work. <laughs> exactly. Use the clay brush to kind of blend that together a bit. Okay, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to go to V5 here. So if you don't know in the new ZBrush, we have subtool like subfolders up here at the top where you can like isolate certain things. So like on V2, oh, there it is. V2, I have the hair missing. V1, I have everything showing. The so V2, so I just want to have 
the eyes and the head right now so I can really make sure I sculpt the details correctly. So I'll just come in here real fast and I'll hide that stuff. And all you have to do is create the new one, select what you want, and hide the rest. Oop, it's neat that that snuck up on me. Time efficient. I love it. I like how you think that, Dan. You're there for me. I love it. I think I found a character from Street Fighter. Zhang Yi, 64 years old. Ooh, nice. That'll be good. I'm going for this uh, heavily stern look here. That one I'm really, really, really liking. I would say Street Fighter lends itself to be a little bit more realistic than anime, but it has that anime feel to it. Yeah, that's already looking a lot better. I'm thinking of making Goku for my first zebra sculpt ever. I have a 3D action figure of it, so I think that would be helpful. The rips in the clothing look very cool. Yes, absolutely. Um, I sculpted... Panther, I don't know if you know, but I sculpted a uh, Vegeta... That you could reference as well, since uh, they'll be very similar. So. You go to uh, my art station here real quick. Oop. Sculpted a Vegeta. So you could take a look at uh, how I put this face together. Anime faces are a lot... Flatter than you think they are. They don't have a flat face, but they are flatter than you think. So, when you're taking a look at some of these things, Vegeta has the most pinched face of them all, uh, next to Piccolo, in my opinion, but Goku's face is relatively flat. So, yeah, really kind of look at your toy, but you can also kind of reference this as well. And that will give you a good sense of how that is. So... I found the uh, Dragon Ball anime uh, style to be very fascinating, and it took me a while to get that look. Yeah, yeah, Son Goku action figure. Nice, yeah. But yeah, they do look very similar. Yep, nice. Thank you, thank you. Okay, we got about 30 minutes left. And like I said, uh, I can show you guys the hair thing one more time before I leave for the evening. So, I have not forgotten. Careful not to draw an M. Bison face on accident. It's actually what I appreciate about the Street Fighter characters. If you look at the animated uh, movie or even uh, um, the video games themselves, if you look at the way they draw them, like the more sinister the character, definitely the more detail they've, they've added. I don't want him smiling. Not smiling. Peace. I'm smiling. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Quick. That's already looking good. I like that. 
a big trick with face uh with detailing faces believe you me the smallest of little details is what changes the face drastically so if you're trying to find a character and you're making big changes and you're still struggling maybe slow uh like maybe um uh minimize big changes and start making small changes and you'll be surprised how much more you'll find in that Yeah, every Dragon Ball character actually has the same face, just there is different. Just about, yeah. I would say, yeah, for the most part, the they're they're all very similar with each other. Have I ever experimented in doing a tune shader of some sort of anime character? I think we're going to do Guilty Gear style shader. I plan on shading. A yeah, actually, I have been considering it. Uh, I've used... Um, you guys know who uh, SK is, Sakaki? Um, I've used uh, his shader before, which is really fun. But I've noticed that there's some cool like shader techniques out there, so... I have definitely been playing with some of that. Um, in ZBrush, we actually have, if you go to NPR, there are some fun cartoon shaders here as well. So, really cool to, like, come in here and then say, like, ah, don't save my changes. Then I have my tune shader here, and then I can load my model. And here, which is pretty cool. ZBrush has a pretty fun little tune shader as well. That'd be good to use. Um, I just don't sculpt in it, but yeah, that looks pretty sick, actually. That's fun. <laughs> and then, of course, too, uh, you also have your other stuff. Go back here. I can't sculpt in that. I can't sculpt in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I said, I can't sculpt in it. But yeah, just open up your spotlight. And then right here, NPR. Boom. It's right there. And then if you want to, if you go to like render set, there's some render setting previews as well that you can utilize. These are more temporary. So if we come back in here and, you know, I have my skin shader four on. If I click one of these, like comic lines, for example, right, um, it will then change the uh, the setting itself, but you don't have to stay in it. So then you could go back to default if you want, but they all have different stuff that when you render, it then affects, you know, it doesn't, look, it became the Hulk real quick. Um, so it only affects when you're, when you're rendered but not when you're, you know, not when you're sculpting. So those are pretty cool. And that's under render set. And then you could just click default to set it back to relatively normal. And you can even adjust all of those if you would like. So um, whereas if you were to go to NPR from the project, this is like permanently set that way. So play with that accordingly. That'd be a painful task to sculpt in that soon shit. It really would, yeah. I don't know how I would do that. Maybe that will be like a challenge in the future. Sculpt only in this shader. Almost sounds painful thinking about it. Do we give him a butt nose?
I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. Let's not do that. Okay, and let's emphasize some of this a bit more. Let's fix some of his eyelids here. Definitely have a little bit of uh, weirdness. Let's get that straight. Got yeah, a few more minutes. Yeah, it's an anime face, so we'll keep it relatively smooth and clean. But... Actually, push this just a little bit further. Save before we break. That's too much. <laughs> no, nope, don't like it. Back a little bit. Uh, how long does Retopo usually take for me? Uh, it depends on the complexity of of the sculpt, obviously. But um, I usually sit down with snacks and good music because it takes a while. Yeah, I don't really have a definitive answer for that because Retopo is a process all on its own. Um, sometimes it could take just as long as actual sculpting. Just depends, you know? You're along for the ride when you sculpt. <laughs> no, I don't like that. Weird. Uh, do you use perspective mode on or off the model? Um, it depends. Right now, I have perspective mode turned on when I'm uh, doing the face. Um, it depends. Uh, most of the time, I don't have it turned on. When I do have perspective mode turned on, usually I'm working within some sort of like 85 millimeter because it's true enough to the eye. Not really drastically changed. Um, but generally speaking, um, I'll have it off when um blocking out the character getting it set up i don't notice that much of a difference it's for for since most of my stuff gets manufactured there's very little correction when you sculpt in orthographic mode meaning no perspective so i don't ever really notice a difference i never get kicked back for scale issues none of it i would say 95 percent of the time i'm in orthographic not perspective when i'm doing faces however um that are more realistic i tend to turn it on to kind of get the sense of what it should feel like but yeah it really is just kind of like it's preference yeah he does look like professor x or lex luther well if i'm ever sculpting one of those i'll reuse this face <laughs> i push that down for a second Gonna be moving this a bit. Again, I want more of a stern look. His face got like kind of pinchy. I think his mouth is too small. I'll definitely be working his face a little bit more off stream just because I really want to like 
get something good and not going to want to sit on it. But we're getting there. Just take my time a lot when it comes to the face itself. Oh, X-Men Project next? Never know. Hello, uh, we'll be doing a little bit of hair... Uh, we did hair tips twice this stream, and I'll go over it simplistically towards the very end with a, with a brush drop. But ultimately, um, it's not too complicated, so we'll go over it again. But if you wanted to just, like, scrub in the back if you're on... Oh, you're on you're on Twitch. So I'll cover it one more time just before we leave. But if you rewatch the stream on Pixelogic's YouTube, um, I cover it a little bit more in depth there too. So this eyelid, we definitely want to make sure we have a nice little shelf there. Get his eyes looking a little bit better. Go. Don't be afraid to mask something off because you never know. Then. Not a problem. Not a problem. Now, what's cool about eyelids, real fast, is. And this part, it's character dependent, um, and if it's your character, um, it's up to you. But the upper eyelid and the lower eyelid, a lot of people will have the upper eyelid overlap the lower eyelid. But you can definitely have them meet up where they are connected. Some people actually have the upper and lower eyelid in the corner on the outside of their eye. Um connected as one they don't always overlap with some characters they do overlap so as long as the eyelids are wrapping around the eye that's really what you should be going for but sometimes they connect sometimes they overlap so really up to you i chose to do a little bit of an overlap this time but since i'm tweaking the eye just a bit thought we'd call that out yeah, last stream was mostly here for sure. Uh, more sculptural, not um, not uh, curve brushy. <laughs> Don't you guys love the terms I use? Go to two. Let's turn that on right there. Okay, I'll work that face a little bit more. We are running out of time, and I will demonstrate some hair stuff. Oh, you know, <laughs> I do, Ryan, I do. Okay, let's go ahead and do some hair stuff, but we got really far. Um, if you guys remember, let's go ahead and save it real fast. 
we reloaded this project before, but here is currently where we stand. Ooh, real quick. If you really want the body to stand out real fast, let's say you're done detailing it, you're really happy, you're like, great, wonderful. But how do I start, like, making this uh, a little bit um, more dynamic? And I want to do it in less than a minute, maybe two minutes. And I want to actually use GPU and ZBrush because this trick works for that. So what you're going to do real fast, and then we're going to do hair, is you're going to take your base color, make sure you fill your sculpt with its base color, and I want the muscles to stand out just a little bit more. And I'm not talking about render, preview, AO, and turning that guy on. What I am talking about, though, is... And this might hit the stream a little hard, but bear with me here. And let's actually stamp this, boom, like that. What you're going to do is go to Z Plugin, and you're going to go to Ambient Occlusion. The normal defaults are usually pretty good. But what we're going to do is we're going to hit compute and it's going to find all the crevices and the dips and the little nuances that give you that separation and it's going to mask it. And this is a GPU driven process. One of the few, ZBrush is mostly CPU. So we're going to be using a GPU process here. So I'm going to go ahead and compute. Bald is beautiful. Absolutely. All right. So you can see the shadowing of the of the mask right now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to color drop where that shadow is, which gives me a darker skin tone. Maybe I'll make that just a little bit darker. I'm going to go ahead and invert by hitting control tap at space. I'm going to hit control H to hide my mask. And then I'm going to go to color. And I'm going to fill this at like... Maybe RGB at like 50%, 30%. I'm going to fill object until I find something I like. Clear that mask, or if I hit Control H, it brings it back. And now we have a little bit more of a dynamic. So we can get just a little bit more of that color in there. So that's one way to add some ambient occlusion very, very quickly. And you can do that to each one of your models, wherever you'd like ambient occlusion. Uh, next week, we're going to start getting into some final detailing of the uh, outfit itself. And now what we're going to do is we're going to push his torso back in where it belongs. And then we're going to show you some hair. Hair, hair is everywhere. That back in. Because it got a little bit pulled out. There we go. That's better. There we go. You gotta be careful with how much you inflate your your muscles. Alright. Let's get into how I did this hair real fast. Yeah, right? Okay, so what we're going to do, there's a little bit more coloring and stuff we'll do later, but for right now, we'll cover that next week. I won't go too far. I will be just fixing his face because I don't like it right now. He looks like he's smirking weird, and I don't like it. So I will be fixing that. Oh, that already looks a little bit better. Okay, cool. Hair. I'm distracting myself. Save. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you first things first. The fastest way to get hair is actually a brush that uh, I'm going to drop the link one more time right here. Loop. This is the Mag Hair Clump Brush. It is a free brush and it is really, really useful. You can build this brush in ZBrush just very easily, but it's already built and it works really, really well. So definitely check it out. Uh, what we're going to do is pretend. Actually, no, we're not going to pretend. We're going to go ahead and copy this head. I'm going to paste it on over here. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so you're, because it's a curved brush, we are not going to really have um, any subdivisions on that. So we're just going to delete lower. And the easiest thing to do too, um, actually easier than that, is instead of deleting lower, just bring in a sphere. Don't be shy. Bring in a sphere, scale it on down. And stick it inside the head. 
rotate the heads a little bit more straight. So now we have something we can work off of, right? Just make sure whatever the whatever uh, in, uh, sub tool you're using does not have subdivisions when doing this. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to block out some hair. So with the uh, mag hair clump brush, what this will allow us to do is actually kind of draw this out how we would like, and it gives us a little bit of uh, gives us a little bit of control. We have clump one and clump two, which is pretty neat. Okay. Can you export that Z brush curves to Blender my um, Maya? I do not believe so. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't use Blender. I don't think you could do it in Maya either. The Geo itself, but not the curve. This is a ZBrush brush. Okay. So generally speaking, what I do recommend is that you block out some sort of hair first before you just start drawing in clumps. But generally speaking, you can draw out a clump. So we're going to draw out a decent clump like this. Just give them a little comb over. So draw out your clump, say from here to here. Yeah, that's perfect. Great, wonderful. Actually, it's come here from this part. That's a little bit better. You can adjust the curve however you would like to. Um, the other thing I like to do is I like to go to brush, depth, drop the depth a bit. I like to have my geo intersecting. Draw that out. We'll give them a little swoop. And then when you like the curve that you like, go ahead and just tap that. And then continue to make however many that you would like to have. Remember that hair folds and tucks under itself, so it's okay to kind of tuck your hair underneath or have it come out the other side. Really, when you're doing hair, make sure you just kind of study how hair moves. It is very organic and very, very much gets tangled up with itself. So play around a bit. We'll do a couple of these. So let's go back to here. Let's grab one more. I have that overlap. It's perfect. Now take a, take your time with this as much as you would like. Okay. Now, generally speaking, this brush actually does have poly group separation, which is what we're going to do for the trick, which if you watch earlier, you'll see. But let's say in this case, we're just drawing out another brush and it doesn't have. Like, let's say you built this brush and you have a decent hair curve brush, but for some reason, it's not having the poly groups that you would like to do this trick. All we're going to do is once you're done with this, go ahead and install this stuff out. Grab your Z modeler. So B, Z, and then M. And then what we're going to do, go ahead and split hidden. And we're just going to isolate. And then we're going to hover over an edge loop, poly group, poly loop. And now remember, this brush does not have any uh, caps. So we're just going to click here and separate these poly groups where we would like them. Say something like that. Click on this guy, do the exact same thing. Like that. We're going to do this. On every single one that we want. Boop, boop. Perfect. Okay. Now that we have this, what we're going to do is we're going to pull up our next brush, which is either you can use the curve alpha that comes in ZBrush, or you can use hair detail. It's up to you. And what you're going to do is you're just going to go to stroke, curve functions, frame mesh by polygroup. Zoom in so you guys can see that. And we're just going to go ahead and click that. Now, it's important to remember that that feature only works if the mesh you're working on does not have any caps. So notice that the ends were missing. It's just single-sided geometry with no back or front cap. And that will do that for you. Then you're going to grab the detail brush that you want, come over to the curve, and tap it. Tap off. Now you have this with all these little swoops. And what you can do with this is then you can go ahead and go to polygroups, autogroups, 
And you can grab a move topological brush, which is built in ZBrush. So uh, B, M, and then T. And then you can now start moving individual strands, however you would like. Now, if you want to 3D print something like this, definitely make sure that your, your uh, hair is intersecting with itself so that you can eventually merge it together and get it 3D printed. But, you know, this works for, you know, high-end hair that you would like to see. You can then merge that together, dynamesh it, blend it together if you wanted something a little bit more sculpty looking. That's how you would do it. That's how I ended up doing Ken's hair. I just used a different brush, bigger strokes, and then, of course, like I said, I have it kind of folding on itself a bit. Probably going to add some more detail, but I try to stick to the anime as much as possible, giving it that kind of spiky anime look. So, hopefully that's helpful. If you go back on the stream in the beginning, especially if you made it this far, or you're here now and you're like, hey, I want to go a little bit more in depth, just scrub back on YouTube, and yeah, it'll be good. Hey, what's up, me? How you doing? Uh, let's see here. Did you already answer my question? Let's see. Are you going to move the arms? Oh, no. the the um, This is pretty much in pose. I'm going to end up tweaking it just a little bit more, but we're mostly in pose. I'm just going to be detailing it. Probably pushing the pose just a little bit further, but for the most part, this is what we were going for. And I like what we got so far. And see his face? It's a little stoic. So, just changed a few things. All right. Later, dude. Gotta bounce. All right, B. Well, actually, we're going to be wrapping up here, guys. So, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. Hopefully, these streams are helpful for you all. So, I like sharing my knowledge as much as I can. I really enjoy these, so hopefully you enjoy them as much as I do. What's up, Emperor of Cheese? How you doing? So, anyway, guys, you take it easy. Have a good one. Let's give you a full turn before we leave, just so we can see it all. It's glory. What we got so far. Hey. Actually, go like this. Like that. Yes. Like that. Yeah, can, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, Ken looks pretty cool. I like it. Definitely going to tune in another time. Awesome. Well, uh, I stream next Sunday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, and if that ever changes, I'll make sure to let you guys know. But yeah, as of right now, that's my schedule. So definitely feel free. If you guys are interested and you had it so far, wanted to join a Discord that is just full of artists helping each other become better artists, Hop on in there. There's a lot of people in there. We share tips, tricks all the time, resources, and try to help everybody get to that next level. Awesome. You guys are absolutely welcome. All right, that is it for the night. I'm going to go get some food. Thank you guys so much again. I really enjoyed uh, hanging out with you all. And I will talk to you guys later. See ya!